at the start we were all saying, oh, this is the new normal. And I mean, it, it, it really has become the new normal. I, I don't even really remember what, what life was like before this, to be quite honest. Hello. We can't hear. Can you hear us? Yeah, it doesn't show him having any audio at this moment. We still can't hear you. There we go. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> it is so lovely to meet you in person. Yeah. <laughs> Or as close as we're going to get to in person. Yeah. So I was hoping you could just introduce yourself. My name is Jackson Waller. I'm, uh, I'm 18. North Van is, has always been my home and I, uh, I've always been uh, passionate about photography. And this year I sort of had a, an opportunity to document our unique situation that everyone in the world has been thrown into. I mean, I was born in 2002, so I'm a post 9-11 baby. So this is, you know, the first historical event that really, I think, will be, because we, we always say, you know, oh, this will be, you know, this is going to go down in history. No, in the, in the grand scheme of things, you know, there's there's maybe a few things that are remembered from from each century. But I think, I, I think this one is, is definitely a, is definitely going into the history books. And I mean, it was just that, that sort of realization, oh, whoa, I'm, I'm actually living through something that, you know, my grandkids, my great grandkids are gonna see and on a page in their history books, right? So I wanted to, to be able to get out there and, and, and sort of be a part of it, be a part of documenting it and, and actually experience it. Do you remember at all, like when you first heard about COVID, what that was like? I'm, I'm sure everyone had a sort of similar experience where it was sort of, oh, there's this new virus and you're hearing about it in the news. And the start of March was when it, uh, when it started to become a little more real, at least for me. Real in yeah. what sense? I'm not sure exactly what day it was, but the day that everything sort of started getting canceled, I remember Tom Hanks got it. That was that was the first big celebrity to get it, and that was big news. Because um, I mean, I was in my senior year, so we were all really, you know, sort of on edge about it. Like, whoa, what's what's going to happen here? Are we are we even to come back? That sort of thing. For you know, the, most of the time, it was um, it wasn't really top of anyone's mind until that week in March, and then all of a sudden, it really just hit all of us. And we begin tonight with the latest on the coronavirus crisis here in BC. Today, in addition, um, we have taken the extra step of declaring a public health emergency in the province of British Columbia. This is not a drill, it's a pandemic. This virus is gonna be with us for some time. How did your life change? Well, the biggest change would have been school, obviously, because I was uh, preparing to, to graduate and uh, everything was moved online. So there was, I mean, that's obviously the biggest adjustment for for any school age person. Through March and April, we, um, we have family out in Ontario and we would do bi-weekly like family Zoom calls. So we'd get, uh, we'd get all 18 of us on and we'd, we'd play uh, cahoots over, um, <laughs> over Zoom, which was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, <laughs> quite funny to to see my my grandparents struggle with the the technology because there's none of us no, none of the grandkids are there to help them right because that's usually what happens and now they've got to figure it all out on their own yeah no that was a that was probably the biggest the biggest change of all you know having to having to change your your whole entire social life but um me personally I had a I'd always planned on taking a gap year, which I'm in the middle of now. I've, I've been saving up since grade nine for, you know, this, 
big trip and it's been you know it's 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 been on my mind for the past four years and uh and then all of a sudden you you get told oh you can't you can't even leave your house let alone go to go to africa or asia right so that was a i mean it's a, it's a very privileged sort of problem to have but for me personally it was a it was that was one of the harder things to wrap my head around knowing that i'd have to have to stay around here instead of you know getting to getting to go explore like like i had planned you mentioned that you were traveling around in europe so you did get to travel a little bit i, I really didn't really have a plan and then late august i i mean i'd been in my house most of the time for six months right so I was like, okay, I need to, I need to get out of here. So I booked a, a flight to, to Europe because Canada had been put on the, the EU's green list because we were sort of in between the first and second waves. I spent two months riding trains around Europe, which was, which was a lot of fun. And it was very, very interesting to see how each country is, even each city is reacting so differently to the pandemic. I had originally hoped to make it until December, uh, but in right at the start of this month, so only a few weeks ago, all the all the European countries started locking down again. So I decided, you know, book a flight out of Rome and then come back and, and quit while I was ahead. Have you had to quarantine then for 14 days? <laughs> I'm I'm still in my garage right now. My dad. Uh, he redid our garage a few years back and uh, and so there's heating, there's a bathroom, there's a TV and they brought my bed out here so I've been out here for the last 11 days and uh, you know it's it's not too bad it's uh, getting a little boring at times but you know it, it, I'd rather keep my family safe than, than be comfortable right. So did you get to graduate at all? Yeah so all of the school high schools in North Van School District decided to do a sort of virtual graduation ceremony for us, which was really nice. What they ended up doing is they transformed the bottom of the Gordon Smith Art Gallery into, uh, there was like a little stage and, you know, backdrop and they put all the school colors in there. And, uh, and so they brought you in like by by last name and then one at a time you'd be all spread out everyone would have their masks on and then as graduates we'd be in our cap and gown and then we'd walk across the stage they, they were filming us and then afterwards they stitched them all together and and sent it out as a, a sort of virtual ceremony which was I mean it was a lot better than than most other schools um, and, or grads in the whole entire country Gods. I mean, it might not have been the graduation ceremony you expected, but if anything, it was historic. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Class of 2020 is definitely going down in history. It's a, it's very a very unique year. Can you just talk about why you felt the need to go out and capture the pandemic? I mean, I I didn't really have all that much else to do, to be quite honest, at the time. I mean, <laughs> online school wasn't taking up all that much time, and so I, I'd i spend a lot of my days just walking around and capturing, I mean, they, it was pretty obvious that they were new, but things that I thought would sort of tell the story of, of where we're at right now, or at the time at least. Those photos were taken, I think, over a course of two months, just being out and about and, and snapping photos of, uh, of what I came across. My first sort of excursion, I guess you could call it, um, I mean, it doesn't really seem like a good idea now, but I went on the sea bus and then went downtown to, to take photos over there. And that's where I took the photo of the almost empty sea bus. That was a very surreal experience because I think it was, I think it was the 5 p.m. C bus, and at that time, obviously, it's you know usually very busy. It's it's rush hour, right? And there were maybe a dozen of us in the C bus total. 
you know, it's it's, it's sort of hit then because I was I, th I think that photo was taken probably mid March, so right at the start of everything. One of my favorite photographs that you took was um, the one of a almost empty grocery shelf, and there's a single loaf of bread because it so just speaks to the kind of panic we felt at the beginning of this pandemic, just in terms of food, um, other supplies like hand sanitizer would run out. Toilet paper. Yeah, toilet yeah. paper is a big one. <laughs> yeah, that was a, I mean, you can't really blame everyone for, for feeling that sort of panic, right? It was that, that week or two in, in mid-March where everything sort of just flipped upside down was, it was it was just scary i think or not even scary just full of uncertainty no one really knew what was going on it you know the, the panic buying is a direct result of that uncertainty right no one no one knows if the if the shops will be open next week so everyone ran down and and they took all the all the loaves of bread except for that one and i i was lucky lucky it was sitting there for me to take a photo of it's all coming in in phases at the start it was sort of um the the panic buying and and all the empty shelves and then it moved into just the desertion of everything it was just quiet streets quiet sea bus you know all that sort of stuff and then it sort of became everyone sort of you know got ready to to hunker down and and be in it for the long haul and that's when all the the sort of you know, community sort of things like the seven o'clock cheering when that sort of stuff started happening and sort of capturing all of those along the way has been uh, has been very, very cool. So you did actually you've seen the and documented the seven o'clock cheering. Yeah, I could I could hear the sirens that were going by Lionsgate Hospital um, from my house. So I decided one night to to walk up there and, and see what was going on. And that's when I, I took a bunch of the the photos that, that I sent to you guys. And uh, that was that was quite powerful seeing everyone everyone out and people were out on up on their balconies waving and banging their pots and pans and stuff. And it's because I mean you, you sort of forget that everyone's still here right it seems very quiet but there's we're all still here we're just hunkered away in our houses so at seven o'clock when when you sort of get that reminder that everyone's here and everyone's with you and and we're all in this together it's a very it was a very powerful moment Obviously, we're still living in a time that's incredibly uncertain, but has the pandemic at all changed the way that you're thinking about the future, your plans for the future? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, pushing pause on every single aspect of life is just, I mean, it, it's going to do something to, to everyone. Just having, having more time has been... I'm, I, th I think it's been priceless, honestly, because a lot of people, or almost everyone, gets so caught up in, in the rush of life, right? Being able to sort of just sit back and, and reevaluate everything and, and think about what what exactly is, is going on has been, yeah, I, priceless, honestly. And, and in terms of changing the way I've thought about my future, I, I think I think about things in a very, I mean, it might not, might not serve me too well, but I've been thinking more short term because you can't really plan anything now, right? It's so, everything's so uncertain that you, you really sort of just have to, you have to roll with it, honestly. There's no other way to do it. Is there anything in particular that's given you hope or comfort during this time? Hmm. I mean, it, it, it has been quite inspiring to see just how resilient everyone is. It's quite incredible that we've gone 
seven months without, you know, with hardly any social interaction and not for us, for the people who are at risk, right? For the most part, people have been, you know, incredible to, to adapt the way that, that we have. I mean, we're doing, you know, interviews online and, and stuff like that. It's, 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 it's quite, it's quite an, it's quite inspiring to see, you know, what, what everyone's doing to adapt to this. Take care. You have what? One more day, two more days in there in the garage? Two more days in the garage and then I'm out. <laughs>